Hallelujah. Let the Lord shine forth. How is everyone? Apparently in England it's hot. Very hot. And this in hot weather we've got awesome lockdown. And in this lockdown I've got too much hope that we will be back to life uh, tomorrow because announcements and updates of the view will be done tomorrow and can I just get quick um, confirmation that I can be heard and I can be seen and also can you tell me that you can even see Mohammed and then while I get that confirmation from you um, let me say a uh, peace of Christ be with you daughter of Christ Peace of Christ, sister. Hello, everyone. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Hope can you, you can hear us. Can you give me permission to be recorded? Yes, I give permission, sister. Good, good. Um, so, uh, I think we are st still having the issue regarding um, moderators. Apparently, um, it turned out that you've been reported. <laughs> someone decided to report you therefore you've been removed so yesterday i did try to um add some of the people as admin but only two people were recognized as an admin um, so those are currently phil and fred and rest of is not working but if the um 37 different arabic currencies in the chat um can you just okay i can see your message i'll try to make you admin again and then we see if it is gonna work or not um, okay and then the moment we started we've got amazing love language here thank you for expressing uh what islam teaches the humanity dear uh human being who is made in god's image Okay, so um, today, um, as you can see, we are going to, um, we started early because apparently lots of things is happening. Um, oh, Rias, thank you. Um, but um, I think um, my current issue regarding um, moderators in admin is um, it seems they've been reported and they've been removed um so i'm just trying to get them on hold um kind of take them again on the um on the uh make them again uh, as a moderator but it, it it just worked for two people i i tried to make um nada and 37 different arabic crowns but um 37 different arabic crowns are you moderator now it seems it just doesn't work because it doesn't give me the option of it as a moderator but um, thank you for uh, willing to step in um, I don't know who you are but I am assuming that you are Christian and um, want to serve Lord through serving DCCI but I appreciate I'll think I'll keep that I'll keep that on hold and once I can't fix the admin i will get back to you Riaz, and ask you if you are happy to be moderator um probably in a couple of minutes maybe <laughs> um anyway um how is everyone daughter of christ how are you doing i'm okay sister how are you i'm surprised that you don't like the heat you're back home you have turkey you have lots of heat the reason i right? came to england because i thought it would be cold and rainy mm -hmm. And most of times it meets with my needs, but it's just <laughs> too hot, just too hot. Um, yeah, yeah. And it it becomes more difficult when you can't practice your freedom of uh, living. Um, that makes it difficult. Yeah. But as I said, I've got a um, very big hope um, tomorrow um, as it, it will be announced. I'm hoping that by next Sunday, by the grace of God, we will be back at Speaker's Corner because I am already seeing the side effects of not being at Speaker's Corner. What's that, sister? 
I, I don't think I should be telling you. It's like lots of things needs dependence in that. Um, um, so how have you been thought of Christ? Yeah, I've been at home. Um, so what did I just do? What did I do today? I was just mainly reading and uh, translating. And uh, I just had... <laughs> Sorry, I haven't been uh, doing my cooking lesson, sister. I repent. Um, I'm not sure if you are taking that repentance very serious because your sound looks like you are quite happy. Yeah, with that. I'm making excuses. Uh, yeah, I had a I had a big pepperoni pizza today. I didn't make it. Um, the pepperoni was haram, by the way, but it was delicious. <laughs> so, yes, it was nice. Good. Yes. Um, what did you do, sister? What I have done? I'm just enjoying um, grace of God. That's all I am doing. But as I said, I'm just longing to get back to Speaker's Corner. I never knew I love Speaker's Corner that much. And also I watched 10 minutes of a video, uh, which I will be talking about it on Monday. It was very painful. It was very, very painful. And I don't know how um, other brothers do when they watch the videos to see what the, what people are teaching. But it was very, very painful. And I, I had to stop in, like, I think it was like, I watched 14 minutes of it, but it was painful. Um, Daughter of Christ. Yes, sister. Before I just move on our topic, what we are going to do. Um, apparently, there are some brothers are concerned regarding you. Oh, dear. And nothing. don't take those things personal. It's always good that body of Christ looks out for one another. And this is a brother who lives in different land. Um, is offering, if you want, uh, recipes. Yes, please. Uh, is it Fred? Thank you, Fred. Yes. Send recipes to DCCI. <laughs> Not to DCCI. <laughs> I, I, I don't have cooking skills, but I don't think oh, I can. Oh, you don't have cooking skills either. Send, so, send, her, send her the recipes too then, guys. No, but like I haven't poisoned anyone. It was only once like I put lots of spice in something that was showed some effects, but I haven't poisoned anyone, but I'm not like... <laughs> good at cooking. I can feed people when it is urgent and necessary. Um, yes. So what um, we thought we do tonight is um, main reason what we are doing is because people are complaining that I'm not giving people attention as they leave their comments in the chat. Main reason is I'm not that multitask. It's difficult to keep eye on the chat and also talk uh, like I need to think Turkish and then translate my thoughts to English and then verbalize that in English. And it takes lots of time. And on the other side, I need to keep eye on the chat. That makes it difficult. And um, But those are the skills. Um, as the time goes on, probably it will uh, improve. But people uh, were not happy with the comment that they are not getting any attention for their comments. What we've done is um, we just went through a couple of comments and then we just thought um, addressing those comments and also answering some of the questions come up from those comments. So that's the plan of the uh, today. And we started earlier because um, apparently a couple of museums um, expressed that uh, when we start, when we start, it is just soon after we start, it is iftar. And it makes it difficult for them to get hold on to uh, what we are discussing. That was the um, first thing. Second thing is uh, there are other brothers and sisters, brothers are doing live streams. So um, I just thought uh, everyone would benefit from them better than just chit chatting with me. Therefore, I just wanted you to have free evening. And other practical thing is, in in England, it's lockdown. Not that much, that kind of uh, much things to do. So, okay. Um. So let's go with the. Let's go with the first um comment. 
Um, so as I said, we will be looking at the command and question. So as you see the um, command or the question, you will know what is the topic. Therefore, uh, let me just gently encourage you to keep on the topic so that we can have healthy discussions. You wouldn't go back and then say, oh, that was just a waste of time because you might be thinking that. Let's start with the first comment. Uh, let me find the first one. I'm so excited, sister, because there's so much gold in these comments, like you put in the title. They're golden. Uh... It's amazing. Now I can't see the comment. Yeah, we do look at the comments. I do. I look very carefully at the comments now. I've seen so much good in the, good in the comments. Okay, let's start with this one first. This one as a question and someone. Let me make it bigger. So this is from. I don't know if. It first time I am putting those comments. So, if you think. It crosses the line regarding, um, you can see the person who left the comment. Please just drop me a message from that on, like, next time when we put the comment, we can just, uh, I don't know, uh, delete it or um, put line on it so that people don't get to see who is the person who is sending the comment. And um, can I just get another quick confirmation if the... Um, 37 different Arabic Qurans are um, part of admin or not, that would be very, very helpful. So, th this is from Islam is Peace. Um, Daughter of Christ, are you, do you have access to YouTube? Are you able to see it? Daughter of Christ? Hello? Oh, where did you go to, sister? Uh, sorry, um, I don't... Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, that's good. Okay, we are not going to do this. Can you hear me? Can you hear me chit chat? So you are not Muslim. <laughs> um, so first comment is actually kind of in the lines of question and person says person is going to uh, uh, deny Islam and become a Christian. Okay. In a sense, it is sad that people think their eternity is so cheap that just answering one basic question will make someone to change their faith. In a sense, I believe that's very sad, but let's read it all together. Uh, do you want to read it, sister, or would you like me to read it? Yeah, I'll read it. Uh, it says, Isa of the Quran did nothing for mankind, in quotation marks. Please show me in the Bible, in the Old and the New Testament, where the Bible said it, it come from mankind. And today I'll leave Islam and accept Christianity, anyone. Okay, this comment has been left on um, one of, under one of our videos. Um, so, person is gonna leave Islam and become a Christian if we provide the biblical verses or even one verse, that Lord Jesus Christ came for mankind. Sometimes I do practice my generosity. I think in our first question, I will practice my generosity, and we will see if I will be generous uh, for the next comments and next questions. So, I will first go to Old Testament, and then I will go to New Testament, and then I will go to Islam to make a case that Lord Jesus Christ came for whole mankind. Okay? That's very, very simple. That's very, very simple. So, um, first two references is going to be in Isaiah. I just thought that's like quicker and easier. There is nothing like personal. Um, so, Old Testament references regarding Jesus came for whole mankind. Isaiah chapter 11. Okay, let me find the part. Isaiah, by the way, for Muslims, Isaiah is in the Old Testament. Just lots of Muslims don't know. 
I'm it is sure a book Muslims, in the Old Testament. I'm sure Muslims know that, knows that, sister, since Quran came to confirm the Bible. Well, I don't think so. I mean, they know words like the Torah, but you ask them what books are in the Torah, they don't know. Yep. Um, things like that. So Isaiah is a prophet of the Old Testament. Yeah. Is around 720 to 690 something or 703, 7, 700 BC. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 10 is the first reference. I'm going to give two Old Testament reference and two New Testament reference and a Quranic reference. In the day, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 10. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand in a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his place will rest. His place will be glorious. Oh, sorry, his place of rest will be glorious. Okay. Lord Jesus Christ came for the peoples and for the nations. That's first reference. Second reference. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. Remember, according to Islam, Jesus is Messiah too. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. He says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to destroy the tribes of Jacob, and bring back to those of Israel I have kept. I will make you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. I will make you lie to the Gentiles, that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. That's the second reference from the Old Testament. Jesus came for whole mankind. Let's go to the New Testament. And then give you one reference or two reference. Let's do two. This is the very, very famous passage of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. And then I will be reading this from verse uh, 18. Okay. If anyone wants to get the context, please read whole of the passage. On my, account, on my account, you will be brought before the government and the kings as witness to them and to the Gentiles. Gospel is for Israelites, for Jews, and for Gentiles. Okay? And beginning of Matthew Gospel, the virgin will be, uh, actually I read it from um, verse 21. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name of Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophets. The virgin will be with a child and will give uh, the virgin will be with a child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel which means God with us with us okay that's everyone and of course let's go to the last one of the end of Matthew gospel and teach um, actually I read it from this part so that you will know full context not a little bit actually when they saw him they worshipped him and some doubted then Jesus came to them and then said all authority in heaven and on earth has given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations therefore Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. 
and surely I will be with you always to the end of age. Okay, let me uh, let me bring one more while we are in the Gospel of Matthew. Actually, I, no, I think that's enough. So I gave you um, reference from the Old Testament, dear Islam is peace. Um, and then I gave you a reference from the New Testament where Jesus came for mankind. Okay. And then let me be double generous and then give you reference from the Quran, which is the so-called word of Allah comes to confirm the Christian scripture. Uh, Surah chapter 19. Um verse 21 he said he said this it will be your your lord says it is easy for me and i will make him a sign to the people and mercy from us allah is making jesus this is what allah is saying allah is making jesus jesus sign to sign to people not to the jews but two people okay and then of course if you go to surah chapter 3 verse uh i think 4 chapter 3 verse 4 talks about again torah and the gospel is revealed he has sent down he has sent down upon you the book in truth confirming what was before it and to reveal the Torah and the gospel before as a guidance for people. According to Christian scripture, according to Old Testament and New Testament, Jesus is for mankind. And according to Quran, Jesus is for mankind too. So kindly for us to move forward healthier, please do send us a link or a video where you are denying Islam that's the first step we want you to take. And of course, I don't want you to become a Christian because um, I answered your question regarding Jesus is for whole man. I want you to become a Christian because you have seen wonderful Lord Jesus Christ. You have seen what Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross for you. You, you have seen the heart of God, but that will be easy step for us to take. Um, soon after you express that you left Islam step by step thought of Christ yeah I see a lot of these silly challenges where people challenge without knowledge they say yeah we'll get these Christians they don't have this in their book uh, when they haven't actually read our book and then they say okay show me when they have no intention of after being shown the truth to come uh, is this person if if this person is genuine Will you now, after you've asked for one from the New Testament and one from the Old Testament, sister gave you double, will you now come to realize that the answer, that you try to trip, oh, we'll try and trip these Christians up, but actually the answer is Jesus did really come from mankind, from both the Old the Testament and the New Testament, and even the Quran, which sister said, uh, the verses that sister said there, which actually uh, emphasizes and uh, emphasizes the truth of the gospel and the um, the Bible. So what will you do now? Will you continue to be a fool and uh, follow ignorance, follow the silly challenges that actually don't come to your benefit? Or will you will you actually now be humble enough and say, yes, it seems that it is true. Let me find out. Let me leave Islam and find out. That's what I want to say. Okay. Um, and 37 different Arabic Quran says Islam is uh, pieces has left the chat. I don't want him to leave the chat. I want him to leave Islam because that's what he promised. But I wouldn't have any problem when uh, Muslims want to practice what Allah practiced, such a lying and deceiving, that's absolutely um, not acceptable at all. So that was the first um, answering to the questions which has been left on the comment. As I said, remember, we are waiting for a 
video which Islamist peace tells us that he left Islam and we can take him to the next step of um, uh, receiving the heart of Lord Jesus Christ. Those, that side is very, very easy, but first we gently need to get rid of Islam. Um, okay, now let's move to the second one. I'm seeing lots of people in the chat. They're giving him even more verses and more evidence and more evidence. No, no, there are lots of verses in the Christian scripture. Yeah. I just don't have time to, not don't have time to, because I just thought I will, if I only give him one, that should be mm. enough for him. But what I'll do is um, I just give him extra. And mm. scripture from Genesis to Revelation tells us Messiah, the son of God is for whole humanity he gave his life for whole humanity god the father loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son to whom to the world um okay now i've got my um second example mm -hmm. um let me put this little bit down um sister are you able to see the second example yeah, I can see. This is already a state uh, statement comes. I am assuming person is already apostate. Um, but let's handle this. Daughter of Christ, do you want to handle this? Yeah, um, he says, Muhammad spoke his opinions on certain things and said, don't listen to him unless it's about religion. So Muhammad, Muhammad said, speaks, don't listen. Muhammad speaks his um, his opinion. Wow. So this person, he was actually in the context was he was trying to defend the fact that Omar, remember when we were talking about how Omar, um, the shaitan, the sat Satan flees from him, but not Muhammad. Yeah, that's the session. We still waiting yeah. answer to the question. How come Umar has a power over heavenly being while Muhammad doesn't have any power? Yeah. So this person said, actually, that was just Muhammad's opinion. Um, and he said not to listen to him. So I think this person is an apostate now um, because um, the Quran is against him. Um, for example, Surah 59, verse 7. Uh, whatever the messenger has given you, take, and whatever he has forbidden you, refrain from it. Uh, Surah 4, uh, verse 59. Uh, Obey Allah and his messenger. Uh, Surah 24, verse 54. Obey Allah and his messenger. If you turn away, um, uh, then you know Allah will judge you. Surah 4, verse 65. Uh, by, uh, by your Lord, they will not believe until they make you, O Muhammad, judge over them and find in themselves no discomfort from what he, uh, you have judged and submit with full submission. So all these verses of the Quran is against them. And he's here saying, it's just Muhammad's opinion. Don't listen to him. Um, wow uh, you're an apostate now according to the quran welcome to the world the world that's free from islam um yet just beware as you become apostate please by the way i did made um riyaz and 37 different arabic quran's moderator can you please confirm if you are moderator in the chat that will be helpful and uh, just beware as you become uh part of the world of apostates um uh, Make sure you do not express that you are apostate in front of uh, Muslim missionaries. And if I were you, I would keep all the previous chats you left in any channel uh, as a reference because probably they are going to tell you you were never, ever, never and ever, never and ever Muslim at the first place. So that's the... Um, that's a side note on that. Yeah. Okay. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, just careful. watch out. Just watch out. I hope that's not his real name. Um, oh, well. Should be okay. Should, Should be, be okay. Um, I know some ex-Muslims. Like, being ex-Muslim or being apostate is not that awful. Your life can be in danger. Um, you can, if you, if you are a woman... You, there is a big possibility that you might even get raped. 
you might kidnapped, um, you might get death threats, but it's okay. Everything is much better than Muhammad. It's called life of love. Let's look at the third one. Uh, by the way, um, let me just move on this one. Uh, I, I, I don't know why anyone is taking personal, but I, what I've done was I draw Muhammad on this. I try to draw Muhammad. It's not as good as thumbnail of Acts 17 apologetics, but this is kind of, I try to draw Muhammad. But what I've done also is I just thought in seventh century, Muhammad didn't have the Colgate. Therefore, he couldn't use proper toothpaste for his tooth. I kind of make some of his tooth to go away and then the rest is like all blackened. I don't know, what do you call blackened tooth, sister? Oh, decayed? Decay? Whatever that is, like when decayed. your teeth is like black and they need like double attention. Okay, so that's our Muhammad. I just draw it before we came to live stream. But hopefully if I do practice, I might improve and even I put baby next to him to Make sure that's Aisha. Anyway, but yeah, I'm not, it's not my gift. I just saw that on the thumbnail of Acts 17 apologetics. And then I just thought that's Muhammad. He was drinking coffee, <laughs> but um, in here, Mark is like, because Mark is like circled. Um, oh. So it's difficult to kind of draw how you want to do it. Yeah, but rotten, sorry. People are saying rotten, rotten teeth. Thank you. Rotten did. Okay. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. It's not Thank you. I don't think I ever been to dentist, but anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. so that's that's what he got. He's got rotted rotted R rotten 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 teeth. Rotten teeth. Yeah, that's what he's got. And you can see some of his teeth are fallen as well. But um yeah, this is or uh, maybe ne in next time I can put him orange um orange what it is? Um, orange orange beard? Orange beard, yeah. But yeah. we will see, we will see. Uh, it's all being inspired. Um, so let me move on to second one. Uh, but let me just see another mocking, um, mocking, uh, I'll take this as a compliment because uh, you think I am actor like a, a planet um, Planet of the Apes movie. I haven't watched the movie, but if someone is able to produce movie, I would take that as a skill. And it's absolutely fine since <laughs> since Allah calls us the same line anyway. Thank you for the compliment. I'll take that as a compliment. But now let's get hold on with the proper life. So let me show you the next example. Uh, This is a bit interesting. This is about Allah's private life. So there are certain things Allah does in his private life. And I am kind of assuming a Muslim here simply saying, actually, actually Allah in his private life is also praying back to himself but let's look at the command and see um how it works thought of christ okay this is from our favorite abbas uh, let me educate you since no one is above allah his prayer his prayer comes back to him it's that simple get it did you get it sister Allah, who is the creator of everything, I think this yeah. is the response to the Surah 33 and Surah 2, where Allah and angels pray for Muhammad to someone or to something. Mm. And Muslims simply confirming that Allah does pray. And also, who does Allah pray to? Himself. Because there's nobody else. So the prayer goes round and round and then comes back to him because there's no one else which um is amazing it's like next level schizophrenia um and he still he keeps on praying and praying and the prayer comes to him so why pray at all if 
you're get it's like me talking to myself and waiting for something to happen. It's like schizophrenia. What do you think, sister? It it used to be very difficult at speakers corner to help um, Muslims to understand or get answer to the question who does Allah pray to, but now since it's been publicly confirmed that Allah prays for Muhammad, now Muslims are simply telling us who does Allah pray to. But it's just like I the thing I am failing to understand why Allah is praying to himself. I know you said, oh, it's simple, get it. But I still don't get it. I don't know why. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like he's talking to us like we're stupid. Oh, don't you get it? He prays to himself. Get it. Why can't you get it? We get it. Um, yeah, you get it. Because it's a silly, silly uh, concept that someone should be praying to himself. Why, if you want to bless someone or give someone good things, if he wanted his uh, mercy to be over his anger, why not just have it be done? Why does he need to pray about it? Um, it would be helpful for your Abbas to just simply help us understand. Yeah, I think, I think he, he, he's in the chat. I've seen him. I don't know where he went. It's not time for iftar yet. Please um, tell, tell us. I'm looking at the chat. It will be strange to um, worship someone who just pray to himself. Even if he's praising to himself, that's already like strange because that means like he's got some issues regarding self-confident and image issues. I want all the glory, but in here he simply prays to himself. And uh, I don't know what it is, but it seems like still they cannot able to get the like see, there is a problem yeah there is a problem um tm cross Paul says uh allah is so lonely we get it yeah allah allah is lonely allah needed humans to be truly allah allah needs money allah is like very needy keep away from him it's like you know sometimes you do have friends when you are with them, they always complain and complain. And one of the things you do is you just kind of come up with the excuses. Oh, I've got something else. I've got not something because like all they do is dry you out. It seems to me Allah is in that club. <laughs> Lonely, needy. Lonely, Lonely needy and desperate and, and crazy. 37 different Arabic Quran says my crazy neighbor talks to herself as well. Oh, well, but your crazy neighbor knows that actually there is a solution for that. Okay, you simply call, is it 911 or 111? Mm. You just call the like emergency and then ask for help. Uh, Adnan Oshir says, Daughter of Christ, uh, stop lying. Allah don't pray. Pray has different meaning. Why oh, don't you tell, Ab tell Abbas? He's the one who's saying it in the comment. It's yeah. not us, it's Did your brother Abbas. He's saying it. Put <laughs> I He's think the one who's, uh, whose comment was on there, not me. Yeah, there is. I think there is a kind of um, issue. I'm um, not saying it. Adnan, uh, Abbas is the one who left that comment, and Al Abbas confirms that Allah does pray to himself. Um, I love to see how you are going to debate that with one another publicly, or you might choose to just drop each other emails and then ask one another to don't even go out public anymore because the shame and all shame a person brought to the Islamic community or to you. But according to Muslim, Allah does pray to himself. That's mm. all it is. So. Mm. And if you're Arabic speaker, what does yusalli mean? In Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi? What does that mean? What does yusalli mean? It is pray what? for. Oh, oh you can not pray. When when Allah says to you in the Quran, pray, what does he say to you? Qim is salah, right? It means you, that you, you should salli. He uses the same word for himself. So uh, don't play these games. Uh, we're Arab speakers. Don't play games with me. It's the same word. If Allah meant something else, he should have used something else. He, if he meant bless, he should have said you barik. Um, I don't think we need to go to do that because Muslim already no, confirmed. No, that because this, very... this man... This man keeps putting on the comments, I'm Arab speaker, don't lie. I am speaking to you right now. Tell me what the word is for pray in Arabic. 
And if, he, and if you say, you salli, thank you, that is the same word that Allah uses in his verse. If he meant something else, he should have used another word. Because Arabic is, a language is full of words. Allah didn't have to use that same word Before, to confuse everyone. And where did you go in the chat? You disappeared. Thank you. Uh, sister, don't make people disappear. I, 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 feel, will... I feel it's like they like a lion in the, like, in the middle of Asad. In the comments, I'm speaking to them in Arabic. You're like a lion in the comments, but when I when you face them, they're like a mouse. Mithil fuck. Don't insult mouse. I know some people eat mouse. Yeah, he's pretending to be a lion, but then when you and confront him, he's like, well, we say in Arabic, it's like a mouse because mice get scared. You step in the room. So um, I guess the um, respond quick respond to the Abbas's comment is, uh, does Allah needs to see medical? professionals regarding um, regarding his mental situation as he's praying to himself and remember mm. his prayer is his mercy his wrath would his mercy would overcome his wrath that's his prayer and um, I'm not sure why suddenly Muslims all got so upset about it it was a Muslim who told us that Allah does pray to himself so if as Muslims are having problem with one another, please, please publicly speak to one another. Like I can't do, like if you are disagreeing with one another, that's you. But end of the day, it was the Quran which states Allah prays for, with angels, Allah and angels pray for Muhammad. And even you do have Quranic verse, Allah prays uh, for mankind as well. So there is no problem since Muslims just confirmed publicly for us that Allah, this needy old guy, just prays to himself. Praise for, yeah, praise to himself. Yeah, it's like they disagree with each other and then <laughs> they get upset at us. Sort it out between yourselves what it really means and then come out and tell us what it means. Um, Abbas is saying, I stand by that Allah prays, and I told you in the past, but since there is no God other than Allah, so his prayer comes back to him, like Yahweh oath in Genesis 22 is for him. Nope. Doesn't make mm -hmm. sense, Abbas. Nothing personal, but I think iftar needs to come quicker. Or other option is just take a flight to Turkey. They already opened their iftar. You can open your iftar over there. Uh, mm -hmm. Christian God in the Christian scripture is triune God. We have no problem with that. You are the one who is having problem with such a things. So let's move to the next one. So which one we did now? Uh, we just did the uh, Abbas's um, Allah praised himself. Okay, let's put another one. Oh, this is too small now. I'm looking for Adnan, he's not there, he's still disappeared. Just give him time, he needs to go and shake it's himself not, up. And it's not iftar yet, they can't use that. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, next one is, that's Muhammad's opinion, because he liked Umar's harsh behavior, but that's not the statement, uh, that statement wasn't from Allah. Again, this is the comment regarding how Umar, uh, as a bloody caliph who has a bloody caliph and sinner, has a power over heavenly beings. Yeah, I'm gonna call this person apostately from now on. Uh, Muhammad's opinion, it's not from Allah. Um, I saw in the comments he says, "Oh, it's about religion." This, this was a. This was about angels and devils, yeah? He, this was about the devil fleeing from Omar. Isn't the, the subject of the shaitan fleeing from someone a subject of religion? And here you're saying that or Muhammad's opinion about that is not, it's his opinion and not from Allah. So Allah, so Muhammad can have an opinion that's against what Allah, what, what Allah's truth is. That's apostasy. Hmm. Two, two statements of apostasy now you've done. Uh, welcome to the world of apostasy. 
apostately. Great, let's move on to the next one. Um, this is just fun. Um, this is the comment regarding the FGM, Islamic FGM, Islamic teachings of cutting woman's private part. Okay, not much to say on that. Let me actually move on. Um, something just popped up here. Yeah, so uh, that, that response from Mr. Abdul, when, when, when we were asking, why didn't Muhammad making, making, make it forbidden, make it haram for FGM when he knew it was happening? Why? Why didn't he stop this evil? He knew it was happening. He said, you will find out in the hereafter, just wait. That's very helpful. Uh, what happens if uh, Day of Judgment comes, the hereafter comes, and it turns out you're wrong, the Islam is wrong, then what will you do? You need to find out now, man. You need to put your brain on now and, and try and work it out now. That's all we can say to you. So someone is calling Allah smart because Allah makes people like ape. Doesn't make that much sense. Doesn't make that much sense. Um, Allah thinks he's owner of the zoo and everything he disagrees just turns them to the animals. That's just like heartbreaking. But I did reply to the questions regarding Jesus doesn't say you resemble the dog. Please, please have little bit manner during Ramadan and do not butcher my scripture. Especially Quran came to confirm my scripture. The passage where Jesus is calling woman uh, woman's daughter is dog actually i um i explained that maybe a hundred times it is a compliment it's in hebrew it means caleb and that is the someone in the old testament who follow god with all hearted and my prayer is that i will have that faith as well i will follow my god with all heart wholeheartedly and even in the context, actually, even in the context, actually, there is nothing offensive to anyone. She's not saying, oh, why do you think I am part of zoo? Versus the language Allah uses towards a people of the book and unbelievers. Actually, it makes people to think Allah just turned up from zoo or something. But that's just different. And um, look into mirror. Um, I don't have a mirror actually. I did have a mirror, but it's um, I needed to give it to someone. Um, I am at speakers corner soon after lockdown is over. Please just drop a mirror, and I'll check it out. But I am confident that I am made in God's image, and that God loved me so much to give His life for me. Oh, Let's and get... notice, yeah, uh, brothers and sisters, and everyone watching, the kind of level of uh, low level of insult that Muslims would go down to, to insult somebody who is confronting what is in their religion. I'll it take shows, that as a compliment. It's, so they believe in God, supposedly, and it's God who created you, and they, they're calling you names. So they're basically insult, insulting their God, because it's God who created you. So if they don't like how you look, they're insulting themselves. And that is the level of the, the, the devilish spirit, the satanic spirit that is behind Islam, that makes people... Go down to that level. It's and it doesn't fine. bother us. I, I, I don't care about those things. Like for me, that shows actually you can't come up with proper argument. And that shows not only Ramadan, but Allah just does something with your brain. But that's just all over different topic. Okay, another comment on FGM. Oh, I think... uh, before, we, before we say it, sister, uh, yeah. again... Adnan says I was never. Oh, this this girl, me. I was. She was never a, a Muslim. She's a Christian, an Arab Christian. Um, recite Surah Fatiha for me. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Malik Yawm Al Din Iya Kan Abdu Iya Kan Astain Ihdan Al Sarat Al Mustaqim Sarat Al Ladin An Amt Alayhim Ghair Al Maghdub Alayhim Wal Al Dalin Amin. And I can recite. What, you, is, and I can, 
I just, can recite you the whole Quran as well. Just, can uh, you can you just tell me also how many rakat is the morning prayer? Uh, in Kajir prayer, two rakats. Okay. And um, also, can you tell me what do you do during the Ramadan? I fast during Ramadan. No, besides, you don't fast uh, now. Fast. You are Christian. You used no, to now, fast. Now, I used to fast during Ramadan, Taraweeh during Ramadan, Suhoor during Ramadan, and Iftar during Ramadan. Okay. Can, uh, can you also tell me uh, the way you would curse... Um, the way you would curse uh, Christians or uh, um, non-believers during the Ramadan? Yes. Um, so we say, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. غير المغضوب عليهم are the Jews and الضالين are the Christians. And هم شر البرية, Surah 98 verse 8, that's you, the worst of creatures. Um, and we when we used to curse them in the mosques, saying, um, "May Allah, uh, may Allah make your children orphans, and may Allah make your uh, uh, your mothers uh, widows," uh, in the mosque to all the enemies of Islam. So we've given you so much evidence now that I used to be a Muslim. Give me any evidence that I don't know the basics of Islam. Give me one example of something I said that was not true of Islam. Uh, if you can't give if you can't give me evidence, then you're just you're not a man. You made a claim. You're not a man that you can't substantiate it, that you can't justify and you can't give reason for it. Sister, come on, sister, have a little bit manners. Islam is perfect, peaceful, awesome, more than wonderful religion. If you are true Muslim, you will never, never give that religion of pieces up. Well, Islam says that we're all born Muslims, we're all born by the Fitra Muslims, and then when someone says, I left it, they say, you, ne you were never Muslim. It's like there's no logic. But I'm so happy, sister, that God has changed me so much in that short time that I've been a Christian, that people now look at me and say, this girl was never Muslim. That is the power of God, that someone who was in, in your, your kind of slavery and under the, the submission of Islam for so many years, with all the brainwashing, has now changed so much that you can't recognize that I ever had any signs of Islam. To me, that is the power, and it is a miracle, I agree. It's amazing. But only God can do that, and he did it for me, and he can do it for you. So bring some evidence before you call me a, a liar, or do you know the name of my family? Do you know the name of my mosque? Do you know the sheikhs that I went to to learn Tajweed and Quran? Do you know where I come from in the Middle East? You don't know anything. So unless you bring some evidence, you either put up or shut up. And let me add something on that. Yeah. One of the sad reality is, while Muslims can say, oh, you were never Muslim in the beginning stuff, I think it is heartbreaking. Allah does not even care that you left Allah. All he cares about the numbers. Allah's heart is not even broken for you. So, uh, congratulations for giving up that ideology. Congratulations for declaring Islam is false religion, Muhammad is false prophet, and Quran is false book. And congratulations for being the uh, daughter of our Heavenly Father. So, well done, sister. Let's get back to business. Uh, I, I guess this all helps you to see it, actually. Uh, we do love you. We do love you. But the such a comment for me once again shows Islam is just nothing. Doesn't even have a proper rebuttal for the basic arguments. And all, all it tells me is, oh, when Lord Jesus Christ gave his life for you, you have no any other option to see that beauty. That's all it is. That's all it is. Um, so let's go back to basics. Um, uh, sister, are you? Um, sorry, yeah, it's not okay. only. It's not only. I have uh, during the lockdown. I'm getting experiences in ex having experience of lots of different birds. They are like. <laughs> full day without any stop they are like choking yeah without any stop i used to do uh bird watching but i don't think after lockdown i will ever do that but um now also i have sun just like coming on my face so i'm gonna handle that but until like. i do that sister can you just um handle <laughs> the um screen regarding the um comment which we can yeah. move on the light of the Lord is literally shining on your system. Um, yes, again from our uh, best friend, our best. He says, I think FGM is horrible. 
and Muhammad never acknowledged it. And Muhammad never acknowledged it. So uh, in that statement, you just condemned Muhammad. You said it was horrible, but Muhammad never acknowledged it. You acknowledged that it was horrible, but Muhammad never acknowledged it was horrible. That makes you better than Muhammad, doesn't it? Uh, and we really applauded you the other day when you told us that you stood up and protected your daughters from uh, FGM. How come Muhammad never stood up like you did and protect the daughters of the Muslim Ummah from FGM when he knew it was happening? Again, you're better than Muhammad because you protected your daughters, but Muhammad never protected the girls of the Muslim nations from FGM. So again, why do you follow him? The fact that he never acknowledged it is crime enough. I think that's quite uh, clear. Thank you. Let's move on to next one. By the way, if Daughter of Christ, if you can keep eye on the chat so that we don't miss the um, we don't miss if there is any gold is kind of screaming out from the chat. Yeah, I'm I'm looking. There is a lot of gold in the chat. A lot of gold. Mm. Um, Daughter of Christ, uh, we just wanted to say we do um, praise God for uh, rescuing you and bringing you into our family. And also we want to say thank you very much for serving him faithfully. Um, God, God bless you. I think, thank you for that. I think lots of people want to express that. Um, so, God um, bless you now, okay, now let's kind of let's Don't focus play yeah let's get yeah my, my head will get too big i'll get <laughs> too confident <laughs> uh you wouldn't want to get uh humbled um yeah no, i need, we, I need we to guard to... guard my heart guard my heart above all it. things guard your heart uh, yeah um okay um can you see the one on the screen yeah i can see it so uh this was uh, a comment we saw uh on the videos from love jihad um, from somebody sharing their life uh, experience. I taught so many girls unsure of their Islamic faith, but duty bound to marry their, as their parents directed. They were so full of optimism that their arranged marriage would be a love marriage. Invariably, they would be isolated from their friends and then the rumors of beatings would start. True to Quran 4.34, how can the men not do as Allah instructed? Muslims I have discussed with are clear that men can marry unbelievers, but women can't marry unbelieving men. Quran 5 5 but most say that women that the woman should be should have to convert ladies if you're considering marrying that uh, Muslim man you might or might not be allowed to follow a career you may well be expected to cover in public you will need to sleep on your right side you might accept your husband's right to beat you and accept that he can take ad additional wives it is how Islam perpetuates itself what do you think sister Um, I mean, to me, that is reality. That is how Muslim girls who are not married, that's how they live. They hope that their husbands will be good to them. They hope that they will fall in love with them. They'll hope that they'll have some co proper connection, like a, be on like a proper marriage. But then this gentleman or, or lady is saying that the, it, the reality sets in and he would hear that most of them would be um, beaten in their marriages. And uh, then he talks to us about that Muslims, they they admit that the women, the Muslim women can't marry um, non-Muslim men, but even the careful women that they marry, they have to convert to Islam first. So he's saying, he's giving a warning to people who are considering marrying Muslim men that this this might happen to you. You might not be able to work. You may be beaten. You and you and your husband may take more more wives to him. Obviously, we know that already. But this is like a, a practical example of this. Yeah. Um, I think, as a Christian, I kind of I would say, it is, uh, it is always privileged to marry with someone, who 
who is devoted to the scripture. There is nothing wrong with that. So you want to marry with godly man. You want to marry man who has been described in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5. Or you want to marry godly woman, Proverbs 31. Uh, but when it comes to marrying with godly Muslim man, that is the issue. Because godly Muslim man, as God, like godly Christian man or Christian woman, they need to be faithful to the scripture. You would want them to follow the scripture. But when the scripture is followed, that's the problem. When godly Muslim man or woman decides to follow the scripture, consequences of it not only hell, but also consequences of it is very, very hard practical life. I'm not going to go through uh, why Allah with all of his wisdom uh, put such a verses. But because we did look at those in the past, if anyone wants us to unpack, we I'm happy to unpack them. But uh, it just if someone is saying something, if someone is saying um, or sharing information with you, you agree or disagree. Best way is um, best way is you prayfully consider. You fast on the feedback or on the command. You pray on the feedback or on the command. And then you get to see what God says and then you react to it. So it is, um, I just want to say thank you very much for um, warning us. Thank you very much for um, putting such advices for us so that now people can start think about it and then they can reflect on it. Remember, we are all made uniquely and individual we are unique individuals uh, are made in god's image and doesn't matter you are married you are single doesn't matter you are having marriage difficulties or definition of marriage is very hard for you uh, or definition of being single or being alone is hard for you there is nothing up there can change the love of god towards you there is nothing on, on the cross, Lord Jesus Christ, with his blood, poured out that love for you. There is nothing can change that. So, just shake your head and look at the mirror and remind yourself, you are loved once for all. It has nothing to do with your gender. It has nothing to do with your being single or being married or even uh, your good deeds. You are loved once for all. Um, Apostate Lee has got a, a comment here, sister. He's talking about FGM. He's saying uh, actually it's a it's a surgery that even pe uh, people in doctors in the West do it. It's just to remove something else that's not FGM. Um, I come from a, a scientific uh, field. That is a lie. If that's not the case, can you please tell me the name of the surgery? It's not only that we. Um I, I can't remember which day we looked at that, but when we were looking at the FGM, we saw what was the reason of it. We saw the fatwas were put together. And then, remember, it's because woman's private part is going to get bigger, three centimeters. <laughs> therefore, it's, it's not funny, sister. It's, Sorry, sister. It, it, it's not, it is sad. It is funny sad. It is funny sad. Therefore, it should be cut off. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the medical issue. And then we talked about, oh, because I've got uh, infection in my finger, should I cut off my finger? Oh, because I've got problems with my lungs, should I just take out my lungs out? Oh, I, my eyes are not very good, should I just get rid of my eyes? Logic doesn't yeah. work. FGM is Islamic. If you still question that, just gently, because you are in the chat quite often. Please yeah. just go back a couple of days ago and then rewatch mm -hmm. that video. As you watch the video, please open your Islamic sources and look at the references which has been presented. And remember, FGM is ugly, dirty, and there is no barbaric. It is barbaric, and there is no place for it in this world yet. Muhammad, your previous prophet, since you are not Muslim anymore, that man said it's okay. Yeah, but he's trying to say, no, it's not the mutilation that's happening now. It, it's something else that's 
less severe. It's a, a, a regular operation. I'm telling you, you're lying. There's no such operation. If there is an operation, tell me the name of the operation. Usually operations are like, uh, they're called appendicectomies to remove your appendix, uh, things like that. The operations in the medical surgical fields, they have names. Give me the name of the operation uh, apostately. If it's really a legitimate operation that all the surgeons of the world performed, you said that they they do it, they perform it. I've got your comment. Or other thing is like if it is Show just us. if it is just a simple operation that people go through, can you just tell Abbas because he didn't want his daughter to go yeah. through that? Exactly, that's a good point. Tell you again, this is uh, fighting Muslims fighting be between each other. Our best didn't want his daughters. If it was just simple to remove whatever the hood, I don't know what that hood is, and it's not that the other, then why don't you tell our best? Tell him to get that simple operation for his daughters. Our best stood up and protected his daughters, rightly so. Well done, our best. Still waiting for the name of that operation, Apostate Lee. Hmm. Okay. I'm trying to find the next comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's pick this one. I know someone who is white and married a Muslim guy. Wife number two. It is amazing that how a Muslim man are just instead of like using the name of their wives, they like that's wife number, number one. Two. <laughs> but <laughs> this number is the, I think this comment is from Christian. Um, I think mm. I have seen him in the um, in the chat before. But anyway, so he's he's got a friend. Um, you know, someone who is white and married a Muslim guy. She become wife number two. Um, he's known to meet random woman in addition. Well, he is a disgusting man. His so-called called wife knows nothing of this. And yes, she converted to Islam. It is very sad. Mm. I, I was in... Um, uh, mosque in Whitechapel, in one of the mosques in London, where there was a training on the Sharia, um, mm. Sharia law in the family, and um, what happened was, um, so, uh, like, this Sharia judge from Malaysia um, was telling how, uh, the mo since the Sharia has been practiced in part of Malaysia, uh, mm. family life has been improved. And then he talked about the wives uh, having like a couple of wives, all those kind of things. And then uh, he he said that um, actually husband is under the zero obligation to tell, under the zero obligation to tell the first wife or second wife or the third wife that um, he's getting another wife. He's under the zero obligation. Mm. And uh, so that's first point. Second point is uh, husband can do lots of muta marriages and uh, he's the head of the house. He doesn't have to explain anything to anyone. Remember, their job is to protect their wife from themselves. Of course, Quran mm. doesn't put the part that they need to protect their wives from themselves because they just get to beat their wife. But anyway, um, so I'm not surprised. But I am double heartbroken when I get to hear the choices people are making on the sake of human love. And mm -hmm. in the marriage, you would expect there is a perfect um, openness between husband and wife. Your husband goes and sleeps around with people, even pay to sleep around with people. And then comes home and pretends, oh, not it's like nothing happened. It's all roses and flowers. That's I think, that's mm -hmm. I think just 
double wrong and disgusting. But I can't, I can't say much regarding the wisdom of Allah behind this. I can't say much about wisdom of Muhammad behind this, as well as um, wisdom of Sharia behind this. But all I can say is keep away, keep away from Islam in any form or any shape. That's all I can say. And if you are someone in the chat who is simply, uh, all, all you are seeing is like your eyes are just making the shape of heart 24 seven when you look at uh, someone who doesn't share your faith all I can say is guard your heart remember your first love and remember the consequences of our actions amen oh um, Apostle Lee, Lee came back with that surgery he says uh, it is reduction surgery some females choose to have for cosmetic uh, reasons <laughs> let me let you me just, okay I am assuming <laughs> this this is still a man. So he's checking he out. Nothing. He's checking, <laughs> just, sister, I'm going to give you time. Just a moment. Just a moment. He's checking out why women are getting their private parts done. What is the reason for the cosmetic reasons? I can't believe like Muslim man is spending his life to just figure out why Muslim woman is getting her private part cut off. So it's for cosmetic reasons. So the girls of the world in the Islam, the babies, are having this horrible thing done to them for cosmetic reasons. So, like we said, so um, the husband can those whatever three centimeters that annoy the husband. That you just made things worse. Isn't a uh, cosmetic surgery haram in Islam, apostately? Isn't it changing Allah's creation? That's haram. So you just put somebody through unnecessary surgery in a lot of countries without anesthetic. There was no anesthetic in the old times for cosmetic reasons. That is that your argument? Because there's no, you know, and as well as I do, because you said cosmetic, you know, as, as well as I do, there is no reason for anybody to mutilate somebody's private, uh, a girl's private parts. So you said cosmetic. That's an even worse reason. That's an even worse reason to be cutting somebody for cosmetic reasons. Shame on you if that's what you believe. If if woman needs um, cosmetic help in their private part, I would strongly encourage Muhammad to get his noise done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we go? Like, can Muslims go get the? <laughs> yeah, or like get his tooth done. Look at his tooth. He didn't use Colgate. When he didn't use Colgate, this is what happened. Not very helpful at all. It's and like I don't think you are helping Muhammad at all anyway. When you try to help Muhammad, you make it worse for him. You make it worse for him. Who's going to see, uh, thank you, somebody in the chat. Who's going to see a little baby, a little girl's private parts so you cut her when she's that young for cosmetic reasons? And then she ends up. Like the lady it's said the, on the it's chat. It's the husband, sister. It's the husband. Remember, they can marry with children. Probably when they had sex with a child who is only three or four years old, they will be yes. having the rule and then calculating how um, how wide her private part got. Oh, it's more than three centimeters. Let's cut it off. Lord have mercy, like seriously, like after I, I yeah. after I do these things, like I just spend time on repentance. It's just, I, just I, you're so, just, you're so, it's you're so nice, sister. I yeah, I know I'm like very nice, but it doesn't go that long, okay, guys. Just like use the brain, Allah giving to you. I can understand if Allah didn't give you brain. Yeah, and realize that the more you try to explain and justify and defend, the more you look silly and the more you're switching your heart off and your brain off and your whole being off to the real God who doesn't want you to be in this mess trying to Google uh, private parts of the woman when you're a man on Google trying to make uh, make it better for Muhammad. That's, that's what Muhammad did to you, apostately. He reduced you to Googling women's private parts on Google 
so that you can try and make things uh, better for him. And even then you made him look worse. Leave this nonsense, man. It's, it's honestly not good for you. Making you look horrible. And in front of God, you look worse. Because you know this is a bunch of nonsense. Anyway, let me see. Have you seen any other comments, sister? I've seen so many comments. Uh, I think we ought to... You can pray about this, sister. Maybe have another similar session. And I, I there's lots of great comments that I've just lost. Um, per- like, all I need is, like, gentle, very gentle version of giving me, even, like, passionate version of giving me proper rebuttals. Those questions still sounds like this week. How many live streams we did? Couple of live streams. And none of basic questions have been answered from this week. Like, still I am waiting answer to the basic question. How come Umar has a power over heavenly beings? I am waiting basic answer to the basic question on why Allah is praying, who Allah is praying to. Like, basic questions, just, it should be very simple to defend Islam if you believe Islam is true. And I don't think anyone needs to be Einstein for this. And Adnan, you are posting the same question again and again. Probably in Malaysia, you don't have very good internet. I replied your question previously, remember? And then I asked you, can you tell me why Allah does need money and inheritance? Please, please provide, listen. Like you ask questions, your questions are being answered and there is nothing wrong for you to answer that question. There is nothing wrong. And I think it would be good for rest of the Muslim community to know, actually, there are Muslims who are trying to answer the questions. Anyway. Um, yeah. Yes, thought of Christ. Uh, nothing. I was, I was just saying, we just asked for why Islam is the truth. There's lots of, um, there were some couple of comments from Muslims, Islam is the truth towards the beginning. I don't know where these comments went now. And we ask what the truth is and we get labia reduction. <laughs> it's like, it's it's just like the height of um, stu- silliness. But let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> Let me get the next one. Okay, this is um, this is another reference. Sister, would you like to read it for us? Uh, yeah, it says, um, I have a, a Christian male cousin, married a Muslim woman from moderate family. Her parents give a, gave a condition to my cousin that he must become a Muslim for, to marry the daughter. So my cousin's father let his son decide for his son's happiness. It is true that the Muslim woman's family are a lovely family, like any other uh, family in the world, tolerant, I think he meant um, tolerant. But when you talk about their way of life or didn't agree of what their Islamic teachings, sometimes their gaze becomes different. It is like they don't want us to disagree or criticize what is in their books, even when we give a good reason from their teaching that is incompatible with this age, such as married man, to have more than one woman. They say it's okay for a Muslim man to marry more than one woman, but they don't want their daughter to marry to marry a married man. So when we pointed out that Islamic teaching to them, they became upset with us, not their books. So we avoided religion talking to them because we don't want to destroy my cousin's marriage. Sometimes we wonder why are we okay for them to criticize our way of life and Christian teaching, but we cannot criticize their Islamic teaching. 
And then we think maybe it's worse for Christian family that have their daughter marry a Muslim than their son marry a Muslim woman. So this is um, this is exactly the kind of attitude that Muslims have that they criticize everyone, and that's actually the that comes from the Quran and Muhammad. The Quran criticizes everyone else, Jews, Christians, pagans. They criticize everyone, but no one can criticize Muhammad or they get killed. You and, can't challenge uh, Muhammad. You can't. Yeah, you can't challenge him, but he challenges everybody else. Yeah, that's why he's called Muhammad. Yeah, and um, what they said about <clears throat> it's ve it's very interesting. They're okay with the idea that a man ma can marry four women, but when it comes to their daughter, they don't want it for their daughter because they love their daughter. They don't want that for her. For her, and this is interesting because that's what Muhammad did with uh, Fatima, his daughter. Remember, Ali wanted to marry another wife. Ali, who married his Muhammad's daughter, wanted another wife, and Muhammad said no because he loved his daughter. He didn't want the same teaching for his daughter. But he was okay uh, for other people's you, daughters. You mean Abu Bakr? Abu, uh, Bakr? Abu Bakr wanted to marry Muhammad's um, daughter, but he didn't allow it, but he led to, uh, Ali to marry him. Yeah. No, no, I mean Muhammad's daughter, Fatima. Yeah, married to Ali. Married to Ali. Ali wanted to marry another, along oh, yeah. with Fatima. But yes, then so Muhammad said no, because he didn't want that for his daughter, for her to be a co-wife. So that's a question we can ask Muslims. Would, are you okay for your daughter, if you have one, to, to be a second wife or a third, fourth wife? And if not, why not? And obviously here we have the problem of a Christian man changing his faith to marry a Muslim woman. Um... That was a comment, but I think I missed it. Uh, there's a comment for you, sister. Yeah. It's very nice to see you with hijab. I think with all your debating with Muslims and other experiences will make you convert to Islam. Uh, I guess that will be uh, sure. Just one, <laughs> one piece of fabric makes you Muslim. You must be so desperate. You <laughs> must be so desperate. Um, uh, just I'm just having bad hair day. That's the reason I've got that scarf on. And I did express that in the past. Uh, I have read the Quran more than once. And anyone who even starts reading the Quran will never convert to Islam. So I read the Quran more than once. Therefore, I don't, by God's grace, um, I, I know what it teaches. I won't take it. It's not for me. And it's not for any human beings as well. But it is just so sad that you think just one headscarf makes someone Muslim. So sad, so sad. And you should know that that's not really hijab because she's got she, her neck is showing. Yeah, that's not proper hijab. Yeah, that, that's not proper hijab. That's just um, her choice of uh, hat on her head. You know, she, so desperate that maybe maybe this is the first sign, sister, basically that your your heart is going towards Islam. Um, is what they're hoping. My daily prayer is that my heart. My heart inclines towards my risen Lord. But as I said, I'm very disappointed if you think just one simple, one simple scarf, it's all you need to become a Muslim. That's just sad and just sad and sad and sad. Um, I'm not sure now um, why people are talking about Bible since we are waiting answer to the question of Islamic FGM. We are waiting questions to the Allah praise. We are waiting questions, what else? Um, deceiving and marrying people. We are, uh, what else we are waiting question for, sister? Uh, what did we say? Allah pray to himself. Um, yeah. FGM. And uh, yeah, why you become an apostate? How come you say that Muhammad doesn't know, his, his opinion is different than Allah's statements when he's talking about Satan? 
escaping from Omar. Yeah, why why you become an apostate? And uh, basically, that's the same thing again. The Bible that they've never read, <laughs> yeah, they quote it as an answer to the question about Islam. It's like me asking a Hindu person about their faith, and then they say to me, oh, but the Quran says this. I didn't ask about that. I, I'm asking about your religion. What? Why are you going to someone else's book to ask about your religion? Is it because you can't answer? Um, Abbas is saying, ideally, I would want my daughter to marry someone single. But if she loves to marry an already married man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem. Well, sorry, uh, repeat that for me again. Abbas is saying, um, he, ideally, he wants his daughter to marry someone single. But if she loves to marry an already married man, he'll be okay with it. Abbas, would you be okay if your daughter gets married with um, someone uh, who is in his 70s? And I think your daughter is like um, late teens or early 20s probably. Would you be okay with that? And so you're happy for your daughter. So you're a married man, Abbas. You're happy. Are you happy um, for your daughter? Like you have a stable house, I hope. You're happy for your daughter to go into a married man situation where he he's married to his wife. They have a stable home, and for your daughter to wreck that home and be the second wife, where that husband steals away some days from his first wife to go be with your daughter. You're happy with that. Um, why? Why you be wait answer to that basic question? Um, can I just get a side confirmations from the chat if the moderating action is working? Can I just get confirmation who is the moderator at this stage? Because um, I try to make a couple of moderators joining the live stream, but I think um, it didn't work. It will be helpful if I get confirmation for that. Um, and yes, Abbas, please tell us regarding the question you've been just asked. Yeah, and if the married man has children with his first wife, your daughter comes in, how do you think those children will feel about your daughter coming in being a second wife, taking their dad away from their mom? So not ideally, but if my daughter loves the married old man, then it is her choice. <laughs> choice. It is, okay, let's, let's see, <laughs> let's see, let's see. It is, can it be okay? Can it be okay? Since like it's about the choice of her, it has nothing to do with Allah. Can uh, can I just explain it to me? If your daughter make her own choice and decides to get married with a woman who is in her seventies, end of today, law of Allah is nothing. So if she can make the choices, please tell us. Are you gonna allow her to make all the choices? That's the first thing. And you are quite. I'm. I'm disappointed. Like I did. Kind of thought. Yeah, you are kind of little bit better. But you think. Yeah, it's okay for your daughter to marry with a man who is in his seventies and have wives and kids. Wow. But at best, if your daughter, ideally, if she marries the single man, how do you feel if that man goes and marries a second wife? And your daughter is the first wife. How do you think that your daughter will feel? Will you be happy with that situation? You know, say your daughter gets older, she gets um, something happens, or he finds a, a better looking wife than your daughter and says, I want this one as well. How do you feel? Abbas, you've got some dangerous, dangerous and dangerous thoughts very very dangerous you see Abbas I know that you're a gentleman be, and if you were not a Muslim if you were not born Muslim you would not be happy with it but only because of your loyalty to Islam are you happy with it you, that you say you're okay because you would never in a million years want your wife your, your daughter to be second wife to anyone you just want I know that you said ideally because that's ideal I agree ideal is one man one woman it's your religion Islam that's moved you away from the ideal and that's why you keep defending it because you, I know you don't want uh, your son-in-law to go marry a second wife when he's already got your daughter. I know that. Because you stops your daughter from being circumcised. You stops her from having FGM. So I know that you love your daughter. 
So I know you won't be happy with a second wife uh, to come into your daughter's family if she, if she gets married. I know that. But you're suppressing your conscience because of the, the satanic religion that you're following. Go on, sister. I've got not like I've got nothing to say. I I seriously I've got like nothing to say. It's, it's shocking. It's shocking when people that you think are reasonable, this stuff comes out their mouth, and you think, wow, where are their moral standards? And Islam has like raped their moral standards. So, um, there is conversation is taking place regarding Allah praise. Okay, let's handle that and then we finish from there. Uh, Abbas, how can you say uh, leave him if you are not happy? Does Allah give you to divorce just because you are not happy? Abbas, you are like becoming better apostate than the rest, rest of the Muslims in the chat. Yeah, that's not grounds for her to ask for divorce if he goes and marries another woman. Of course she's not happy. No woman will ever be happy, but that's not, uh, you know, if she goes to the Sharia court, to the, to the judge, he will not give her a divorce if she says, I'm not happy because my husband married a second woman, because he has the right to marry up to four. So let's deal with this, um, what Allah is up to above the throne or above the water or above the heavens, wherever Allah is, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see what Allah is up to. Um, let me, and this will be the probably last topic we will discuss, but anyway, let's just go. So on the screen, what we have is we have wonderful verse of Allah. Uh, uh, Phil, I try to, uh, I think I did make first and last moderator. Um, first and last, if you are moderator, can you just confirm that for me? Sorry, we, uh, we've been having some breakup with YouTube. Uh, apparently there was a um, all my moderators have been removed, so I'm just trying to remake those um, moderators. If you confirm that um, it worked for you, that will be very, very helpful. Let's now go to Surah 33, verse 56. Daughter of Christ? Yeah. Um... So if you uh, be kind, so I have looked at this topic like with lots of lots of videos. And Speaker's mm -hmm. Corner video screams out regarding uh, Christians are asking, who does Allah pray to? Okay. And um, some of the Muslims in the chat, such as um, Abbas, express that Allah prays to himself. So we shouldn't be having any problem at the first place that Allah does pray. But because I said I am practicing my generosity, because I'm just like getting to hear these birds are still singing, even like it's seven o'clock. Uh, with this generosity, I'm just going to read the uh, bird once again. Okay, so do you want to read, Sister, first, or do you want me to read the verse? Um, I read the English and then you read the um, Arabic. Okay. Okay. And then. After this, we look at one more comment and then we will finish from that. Um, Allah sends, this is Surah 33, verse 56. So this is the divine sayings of Allah. Okay? Allah, the one who is like, can't even have a girlfriend. But anyway, Allah sends his salat on the prophet and also angels too. All you who believe, Send your salat on him and greet him with the Islamic way of greeting. Greeting, sorry. Um, daughter of Christ, can you read the uh, Arabic for me? Uh, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما. Okay, can you identify it for me? Uh, where is this word salat? Okay, as you can see in English translation, the mm. word has been translated as salat. Okay, can you um, tra verbalize, recite, um, pronounce that word salat for me? Yeah, you saluna. Yes, the verb. Salat. Okay. Yeah, you saluna. Um, and then can you tell me in Arabic, since um, Arabic is the language of Allah, lonely Allah, um, what is baraka means? Uh, baraka means a blessing. Oh, sorry, I was going to say the uh, English one. What is word blessing? A baraka. Okay. What is word mercy? Uh, rahma. Where is, what is the word for honor? Sharaf. What is the word for grace? Nama. Okay. But the word which has been used in the Surah 33 verse 56, what is the word? Yusalluna. So it's not none, not none of the what I ask. And it nope. has been translated as Salat. Okay. Yep. Angels and Allah is doing Salat. Yep. Okay. Yep. If you, uh, if you uh, go to mosque, okay. What do people do in mosque on Friday uh, around 1.30? Uh, they are uh, yusalluna, Adnan. Yeah, the Muslims are yusalluna. So they are doing salat? Yes. Okay. So Muslims are doing something in mosques. It's that thing is being done by Allah and by angels as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I don't have any problem for Muslims to do Salat in the mosques or even at homes. Um, I do have problem when they do in the middle of restaurant. Um, I don't have any problem for angels to do Salat. But I have a problem when Allah does Salat for Muhammad. Okay? Because mm -hmm. when man does Salat, they do Salat to Allah. Angels do salat probably to Allah. Muhammad mm. does salat for Muhammad to whom? That's the question. Mm. According mm. the Muslims in the chat, Allah does salat to himself. Mm. I am not even asking. I am not even asking the basic question. Does Allah do wudu? <laughs> How does Allah clean his two hands? Because Allah has only um, two right hands. Uh, how does Allah clean his nose uh, or his feet? Does Allah needs to use uh, uh, as Allah as Allah washes his feet mm -hmm. while he does the budu? Does he shove his uh, shin or Chain? his sh shin is hidden? I'm not asking those basic questions because I know as a Muslim, you are thinking about those basic questions. My the simple and simple and simple basic question is. As Allah prays for his mercy to overcome his uh, wrath, his anger, simple question. Who is the hear of the Allah's prayer, Allah's salat? Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Adnan says, I told you before, Allah doesn't pray. Allah right. sends blessings on salah. Uh, and I'm Arabic speaker. Adnan, in that sentence you gave us, Tell me what Salah is. Can you translate Salah? He, you said Allah doesn't pray. Allah send blessings on Salah. What is Salah? Salat Fajr is prayer of Fajr. Salat uh, Dhuhr is prayer of Dhuhr. Salat Al Asr is prayer of Asr. Salat Al Maghrib prayer of Maghrib. Salat Al Aisha is prayer of Aisha. You said Allah send Salah. What is Salah? Does Allah... You're, an Ar you're an Arabic speaker. You don't even have to be an Arabic speaker to know this. Does Allah um does Allah do salat during the Ramadan? And why don't you tell Abbas who said salah is prayer? He doesn't have a even Abbas knows and he's not Arabic speaker now. Hmm. Now let's see what the Muslim uh, Islamic tradition is telling us. This is Qudsi. Mm-hmm. Oh, Israelites, sorry, the Israelites said to Moses, 
Does your Lord pray? Moses said, Fear Allah, O son of Israel. Allah said, This is Allah speaking, okay? From now on, everything Muslim says will be shut down by Allah. Because remember, even Muslims would say, Allah's word, Allah's word come is above all things. Allah says, O oh Moses, what did people say? Moses said, Oh my Lord, you already know. Then say, they said, Does your Lord pray? And Allah steps in and this is what Allah says. Tell them, this is what Allah is saying, okay? Tell them my prayer for my servant is the is that my mercy should precede my anger. If it were not so, I would have destroyed them. It's not only Allah prays for self-control, but Allah's prayer has been answered. Therefore, Allah did not destroy humanity. So Allah prayed to someone for his anger management, and that has been answered. Yeah, and um, if it was, if it meant send blessing, no one would ask, does Allah send blessing? Because everybody knows the fact that they've asked, does Allah pray, means that they can't imagine that Allah prays. Adnan, I don't know, I don't want to be rude, but um, I'm not sure, like, are you are you pretending not to understand or you really don't understand? If it meant send blessings in Arabi, it would be yubarik. In Allah, you barik Muhammad. If he said, if he wanted to say, Allah send blessings, it wouldn't. It wouldn't use the word you And, and I don't. I, and I don't know how much Arabic you say. You're from Indonesia. I'm think. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt because I've seen you write some Arabic. If you want to say to me, I give you blessing, you will say to me, I, ana ubari kuki. You wouldn't say ana asadli aliki, would you? Allah does the same thing. He says. Uh, uh, I uh, uh, Muhammad. When he should have said Ubarik Muhammad. And if Allah is if, if you can say it to me better than Allah, then you're a better communicator than Allah then. Then you should leave Islam. You're better you're doing a better job explaining to me than Allah. And please don't write any more silly comments because uh, I need to repent for my lack of patience. Because I don't expect this from Arabs. I expect that from Abbas, uh, Adnan. Abbas did better than you. I don't think Adnan is um, Arab. He's from Malaysia. Yeah, um, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but I don't. And no Arab would argue with me here. Um, let's look at the dictionary. So remember, in Surah 33, uh, 56, 33, 43, and in Surah 2, Allah does something with angels. Okay. In um, verse 6, 56. Here's the dictionary definition of what Allah might be doing. Sister, do you want to explain this for us? Are you able to see what is on the screen? Yeah, um, this is from the Lane's lexicon. Yeah. Um, for the verse, Allah and his angels pray. There is only one meaning, which is magnification. Magnificate, God and his angels magnify the prophet. Magnification is part of worship, by the way. So when we pray to God, we magnify him. We magnify his name. We, you know, so that's exactly what he's saying. So when you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, oh Allah, pray on Muhammad, that means magnify him, which is part of worship. That's according to the lens of lexicon. So Allah is using a verb that is to do with worship in the Arabic language, to, to say that he's doing that to Muhammad, magnifying his name. What is Allah doing magnifying someone else's name when he is meant to be God? Shouldn't have magnified anybody's name. He should have his name magnified by others. So that's the point we were trying to say, that's shirk. Um, I am not sure if you are going to see this or not. It will probably will be a couple of um, minutes for you to see this. Uh, sorry, 20 seconds. Here is the Arabic of Ibn Katir. In Arabic version of Ibn Katir, 
Muslim scholars have zero problem for Allah to pray. Okay. Even in Tilmidi, sorry, in Tabari, Muslims don't have any problem for Allah to pray. So now, um, daughter of Christ, would you mind reading the um, screen for us? Yeah, sure. I'm just waiting it to come for, for it to come on. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, this person is not Arab, Adnan. No Arab person would tell me put pray in the dictionary because we know it just by being Arab. Uh, it's like me saying to you, put pray in the dictionary to see what it means, uh, sister, and you speak English. It's like, I know what it means. Um, okay, so it says here in in Arabic, Adnan, read if you can with me. In the law, malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. Allah and his angels are praying upon the Prophet, meaning um, uh, his his prayer is Allah. That's what Allah is saying when he's praying. Salatu tabarakah taala is sabuh qudus. It means uh, I am exalted and I am holy. Sabaqat rahmati ghadabi, which means may my mercy uh, uh, precede my anger. So it actually is saying what Allah is praying. He's he's uh, saying that he's holy, uh, and he's saying um, may Allah, may my mercy precede my anger. And then um, the highlighted parts in the second uh, going down. Um, Ibn Abbas says that uh, Israel, the Israelites said to Moses, Hal yusalli rabbak? Does your Lord pray? So his Lord said to him, They asked you, Does your Lord pray? Tell them, Say yes. I pray and my angels upon my prophets and messengers. So obviously, again, this is very obvious. The Israelites would ask Moses a question, does your Lord pray? They wouldn't ask, uh, does your Lord send, send blessings? Because everybody knows God sends blessings. The fact that they ask, does your Lord pray, means that it's something that they know that it shouldn't happen. And then Allah said to, that, to them, apparently, yes, I do pray. I pray upon my messengers and prophets. And of course, not only Allah prays for his sinful messenger but also also allah has eternal prayer for um being directed to a um, um, straight path that's the eternal prayer of allah in surah one so now mm -hmm. allah does pray that's identified now basic question is who is the hero of allah's prayer according to some muslims in the chat Allah does hear his own prayer and Allah does respond to his own prayer. That already tells me Allah needs medical help. But you will be the one who makes that judgment. The God you worship needs a medical help. And I think you can get that simple help from Boots without even calling 111. Let me just bring our attention to the, our last point. Um, let me go to that. This is in the sense of uh, encouragement. Uh, let me find that. So this is um, left a comment. Um, I just saw something very helpful from Phil, who does amazing the amazing job in the chat. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, by the way, did I get uh, first and last? Are you moderator at this stage, or are you still processing? And also, is the thirty-seven different Arabic Qurans moderator or not? Can I just? Sorry, I think I did ask, probably you already replied it, but I can't remember if I saw the um, I saw the response or not. That would be very helpful if I if you kind of just let me know once again. Um, so this is the comment which has been put in the under the video of Love Jihad. Um, So, daughter of Christ? 
Yeah, so this is very encouraging so I, comment. I, I am intentional to make sure that you are the one who does the readings. So I don't want people to kind of tell me my uh, speaking or my English is much, much better than Mohammed's language. So I want you to kind of uh, do the reading so that people don't even notice that your uh, English with my reading, they will notice that my reading and my speaking is much better than Mohammed's. But anyway. No problem, sis. Um, it says, Hello, Hatun and Daughter of Christ. I'm a single, never married Christian woman in my 40s. About six years ago, I was pursued by a Muslim man in his 30s who nearly swept me off my feet because he gave me attention no man before ever had. He told me how beautiful I was, how he respected my chaste character, how he loved me and wanted to marry me. He said all the right things, and although they, there were red flags, I wanted to believe what he said was true, but he really was attracted to me and really loved me. I'm a strong Christian and searched the Bible for a loophole, but found none. I had to cling to Jesus and the verse about not being unequally yoked. I knew almost nothing about Islam at the time because of this man. I devour devoured everything I could find about Islam, numerous books, YouTube videos from women who had married Muslim men, which were mostly warnings against it, and any Google search, which included Muslims warning against marrying Christian women. This man has since moved on and married a Muslim woman from his own culture, and I remain single, but I have grown so much in the last six years. I see all the wonderful things that have occurred since then, in, including introducing me to ministries such as your own. The door opened by reading Nabil Qureshi's book, Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. Because of this, I had the privilege of meeting Nabil at RZIM conference in 2016. I have since, since met Jay Smith, David Wood, Sam Shamoon, uh, Vocab Malone, Abdul Mari, Al Fadi, and others in person at various conferences and many more through their YouTube videos and online ministries. I know my heart was broken over this Muslim man, but ultimately he did me a favor. Everything you are saying is true. Christian women need to cling to Jesus and the Bible and the truth. Emotions are deceptive and cannot be trusted. I dodged a, a lot of heartache by following what God says in the Bible and turning down this man. The man who pursued me became very harsh and insulting to me when I turned him down. When I said that I had asked, um, when I said that I loved him, but I loved Jesus more, he insinuated that I was stupid and would one day realize the truth and the right path. He also initially asked me the questions, where does Jesus say I'm God, worship me, and said my Bible had been corrupted, etc., etc. Six years ago, I couldn't defend myself, and he caught me completely off guard. I thought he was so intelligent. I have since learned that he gave me the classic Muslim arguments that David Wood mentions over and over in his videos. I now know this man was just parroting what he had been taught by imams. I have used everything that I learned to ed educate and correct others, including well-meaning Christians who think that we worship the same God. I have also reached out to Muslims. I have a female Muslim friend who I love dearly and have had interesting conversations with her and her husband. And I have confidence with approaching Muslims I encounter that I wouldn't have had before. They are not the enemy Islam is. I don't have your boldness or bravery, but I hope I'm making a difference for Christ. Wow. So I was very happy to see this. This is what happens when you follow the Bible. This lady said that she's a strong Christian, even though she was tempted by this Muslim man who uh, tried to tempt her and gave her attention and she thought that she he loved, he loved her. When she couldn't find a loophole in the Bible to say you can marry him, she stood firm and that's when the truth came out. Yeah, his true colors came out. He started insulting her and she saw the real character of, of him. She would have been stuck with that if she had ignored the word of God, the Bible, and followed her desires. And that's that's amazing, sister, that we saw what, the tragedy that can happen when we don't follow the Bible. But we saw also the, the good that can come out when you do follow the Bible. Now she's she's learned so much about defending her faith. She's um, approaching Muslims now, talking to them about Christ. She dodged. She really dodged a lot of sadness and heartache. Because she would have married this this abusive person that he, you know, all of a sudden, this loving man, he started calling her stupid. He started shouting her, insulting her, insulting her faith, all because she said she loved Jesus more than him. That's that's the truth. 
And uh, it was amazing for me to see that somebody did was actually strong enough. And I pray, I pray for this uh, lady. We, I really hope that she can call one day and speak to us. Uh, beloved ones, we do pray for uh, for our brothers and sisters being faithful to the Christian scripture, even though they do find consequences of being faithful to the Christian scripture is heartbreaking. But Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, logic of cosmos comes first. That's the bottom line. And it, it's not clinching our hearts, but inclining our hearts, I think, towards God. Once our hearts unites with the heart of God, there is nothing can separate that. And I am, in a sense, I'm just disappointed with seeing such a comments right now on the chat. Someone is saying, I hope you are, I hope you are not Christian. You are just making joke about this. Someone says, I want to marry four Muslim women and convert them all to Christian. I really do hope that you are not Christian and you are making joke about this. Because it is the work of God to bring people to himself. And we don't, as a Christian, there is no place in my scripture that I start in a relationship and I marry with someone in the intention, all of my goal is not sharing life with them, but all of my goal is to bringing those people to Christian faith by playing this charming guy. That's not biblical at all. You want people to give their heart or you want people, especially the females, to receive the heart Lord Jesus Christ give it to them to receive that heart. You don't want to be in a place where you don't want to be in a place where the, someone who you share life in this occasion you are thinking like with four wives, which is goes against Christian scripture at the first place. But having someone and sharing life with that person and knowing that person is just loving God because person loves you. I don't he, want. He, he says he's a, a joking sister. Sorry. Okay. I don't want, in case if it is serious, in case if it is serious, I don't want anyone to become a Christian because of me or because they love me. We want people to fall in love with the beauty of Lord Jesus Christ. And as we read the comment of sister, she's in her 40s now, which she believed that she was loved and she was... Um, Swept by her, her feet. Yeah, uh, swept off her feet. Swept off her feet uh, by this Muslim guy. But she, she said, oh, "Okay, let me dig into the Christian script and justify that." What she saw in Christian scripture is, God wants all of us, as as us as a fool. God doesn't want little bit of our hearts to Him. And then 99% of our hearts to a man. Or God doesn't want uh, you to kind of treat him as you would treat underwear. Or you would treat a scarf that you would wear it whenever you want to wear. God wants all of us. With all of our mind. With all of our heart. With all of our soul. He wants us as a proper being to love him. And sad reality is. Or some of I, some of us might say that's the beautiful reality. He cannot force us to do so. We are not robots. We are not pre-planned humans. It is love is a choice. You get affected, and your heart desires for something. My heart desires for this coffee, and no one no one forced me to love the coffee, but there was something. When I saw the coffee, I was just like, oh, coffee, I love you. That, that, that was the like love at the first sign. And it is the same thing. There is something 
in our God makes him more than perfect, makes him more than um, uh, more than awesome that birds wants to praise him, human beings wants to praise him. That's our God because he's beautiful, he's wonderful, he's awesome. And it is great encouragement to see actually when our sisters stands in the place where they need to make a choice between scripture versus following their emotions or their affections or their feelings, they do choose the scripture. That is amazing encouragement. And I do pray that you will be blessed and day after day you will experience this and you will see the awesome, amazing and fullness of love, love of God. And I pray that your heart inclines towards him again and again. That's my prayer. But also, as we talked in the uh, sessions on the love jihad, also I am aware that as a human beings, when I see this coffee, while my eyes are just like screaming out with hearts and then say, oh, coffee, I love you. Also, I do know my heart fully, fully needs to gaze upon Lord and then say, I love you. But there is a temptation out there and people do know what is our weak weakness. It is sad reality. It is sad reality, but uh, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, creator of universe, creator of us, exercised his love for us. While we were still sinner, he gave his life for us. That is the love we want to hold on. Humanly love is going to pass away. Human love, like, we, like, okay, I like coffee. Also, where is my tea? Also, I love tea. So, the love we have just changes when we see something more attractive than other one, or something is more, much tastier, tastier, I don't know, like, much tastier. Uh, but it all goes back to core of yourself. Where does your heart beat at the first place? Because heart of Lord Jesus Christ beats for us. He is the one who donated himself. He is the one who donated his heart to my heart. Therefore, I am see seeing the love he has given me. Therefore, I just I, I am a just responder to that love. That's basic in principles. And we look at the Christian scripture and we see men of God or women of God follow their desire. They married people who did not share the same who did whose heart did not beat for Yahweh and that take people away from Yahweh that take people away from from where they were at the first place that happens because thanks to Islam there is love jihad but also as I said I'm very grateful that there is uh, brothers and sisters out there who sees or who lives with, with the full of heart beating for towards Lord Jesus Christ. That is just beauty. That is the beauty of our God. And um, yeah. Amen. Amen. We can't be people who we can't be people who replace 
God for man, for woman, or for mug, or for kafir. Because God is so awesome, we can't replace him. We look at the cross of Christ and we see the way he demonstrated his love for us. There is nothing out there can change that. I know I'm just like repeating the same thing as broken uh, broken record yes broken record but doesn't matter you are single doesn't matter you are married doesn't matter you have kids doesn't matter you uh, you have dog doesn't matter you've got uh, books doesn't matter your room is tidy doesn't matter your room is messy doesn't matter you didn't do your exercise doesn't matter because God loves you because God loves you. He doesn't love you because you are married, you are tidy, you are clean, uh, you brush your hair, uh, you read your Bible, uh, you pray, you uh, do certain things. He loves you because he just loves you. That's his nature. He loved you enough to give himself for you. Please, please do pray fast speak to yourself not the way Allah speaks to himself but speak to yourself Psalm 42 speak to yourself the scripture and remind yourself day after day that love of Lord Jesus Christ is more than enough for everything he's more than enough for us and nothing can change his love towards us we cannot be people who uses God as underwear or as scarf or as something else and of course on the reality is today you might be struggling being singleness or being married or not being married or not having kids those kind of human uh, needings and those are good things like there is nothing wrong to being single as well as there is nothing wrong being married there is not, nothing wrong not having kids versus there is nothing wrong uh, having kids. There is nothing wrong not having dogs and there is nothing wrong having dogs. Those are good things. They show how we care, concern for one another. How do we express love towards one another? But when the day comes, when the day comes, when we meet with our Lord, who is the bridegroom, life is going to be fulfilled fully. Let me just finish with that scripture for us. Then I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven, heaven and for the first earth had passed away. Then there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard loud voice from the throne saying, Now dwelling of the God is with man, and he will be with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old all the of things have passed away. That's the day. That's the day we are looking. And it goes on and then says, beautiful, it's just beautiful. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. There will, there, they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. 
They will not need a light of the lamp or the light of the sun, sun for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. Whether you are thinking there must be more than this, there must be more than this as a husband, as a wife, or as a child, as a kid, as a dog, whatever it is. If you are thinking there must be more than this, that is Lord Jesus Christ. King of Kings, the Lamb of God. He's so awesome. He's so beautiful. There won't even need a sun or a lamp. Because his light is going to cover everything once for all. That's the Lamb of God. That is the one who gave his life on the cross for our sins and for ourselves. And that is the one who simply says, Would you be mine? I want you fully because I love you. Of course, it is choice to us. Do you want to say yes to that marriage proposal or do you simply want to ignore that and try to satisfy yourself with worldly things or with the things we think that is what we are all looking for? Daughter of Christ, thank you very much for helping us out once again for the destruction of Islam. And we say especially thank you to Mohammed for joining us. <laughs> Hopefully I will fix him and get him some toothpaste or toothbrush. But we will see you on another live stream. God bless you all. God bless you, sister. <laughs>